Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach, and today we have with us Denise Walsh, who is a transformational trainer with It Works and host of the Dreamcast. Welcome to the program, Denise. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. And, you know, I love um, titles and and, uh, the way that people uh, describe themselves. So let's talk about what a transformational trainer is, because it sounds like, of course, something where you are impacting other people's lives. So give us a little bit of your background and then uh, let's merge into what a transformational trainer is and how you help people. Absolutely. So my background is I got my master's degree in clinical psychology. And if you do anything in psychology or the helping professions, they basically say you can't get a job without a master's. So I got my master's in clinical psychology and got my first job at a local community mental health. And I just love people. Like I got into that field because I really wanted to serve the world and help people and pour belief into people. And it did not take long in that profession to be tired, bored, burnt out. I went through what they call like a quarter life crisis. <laughs> 25, you know, you get your first job and you're off to change the world. And then you realize you're only living for the weekend. <laughs> and, yep. and so, yeah, I, w- I was burnt out. I have this like big dreams and these big goals, but I felt like they were starting to shrink. So needless to say, we started our own business and have been entrepreneurs within that business with it works for over 11 years and throughout that journey i've been able to take my love of people and my love of psychology and transformation and helping people kind of blossom into who they were created to be and use that within my team to duplicate leaders and you know help cast vision and that kind of thing and so now i love to say i'm a transformational trainer because i'm not somebody who's just going to tell you, you know, I don't just speak and say, good luck, see you later. When we do trainings and when we do, we do like exercises. So I make you do it right then and there because I feel like so often we know what to do and we just don't do it. So we'll do exercises in our, in our train. I mean, the goal is to see transformation right before our eyes. And so that's, that's why I was like, what is my, what should I call myself? And we, within brainstorming, we decided that that's, that's a, a good representation of what we work to do. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's really interesting that um, you didn't say, well, I was a trust fund baby, had $20 million sitting in the bank. So I'm telling people how they can transform their life when you have not had any type of transformation. So it's always the people that have struggled or persevered or succeeded or still struggle and persevered, succeed, that are the ones that say, look, I haven't figured it all out, but here's what I've learned along the way. Let me put my arm around you and come alongside and, and see if I can be a support to you as well. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. And I think once you break through your own personal glass ceiling or walk through the mud and get to the other side, there's this excitement. You know, you're like, oh, my gosh, come on, you have to come too. there's so yeah. much growth when you push through it. So tell us a little bit about without getting into too much uh, detail, personal uh, uh, struggle. But what are some of the breakthroughs, walls, hurdles that you were able to break through so that you now are focusing on uh, uh, helping others transform in their lives as well? You know, there's been so many throughout the years. I I feel like I've, I've, you know, quote unquote, been through it all in terms of experiencing fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of success even. You know, what will people think? Do they think I deserve it? Are they looking at me um, with negativity? You know, just all of that kind of thing. Fear of what if it falls apart? Um, but I'd say the two biggest things that I would, that, that really helped me grow was, when I realized that I could do this. You know, I think sometimes we have, we we see other people experiencing success and we're kind of like, good for you. (laughs) But when I realized like, no, I really could do it too. And that I didn't have to be somebody else. I didn't have to, um, you know, get better at my weaknesses. I really just had to focus on my strengths and, and thrive in my gifting and that I could experience success as well was a big aha moment because I was really good at the comparison game. 
for quite a yeah. while, like looking at everybody else and thinking I needed to be different or better. Um, but once I really realized that, and I realized this two different ways. The first way is my mom. She actually, she said to me, so tell me what you do with your business. And I was telling her all of the things that we do with recruiting and training and helping people and um, focusing on health and all of these things. And she said, wow, it sounds like you were made for this. And I said, well, thanks, mom. <laughs> because so many times the people closest to us, when you yeah. start your own business or take a risk, you know, they're the ones that are like, what are you doing? It's not safe. Um, so to have that kind of person or that approval was cool. And then the second thing that happened was my, I was kind of complaining to my husband saying, I need to get better at this and I'm not a good salesperson and maybe I need to go back to school. And he said to me, Denise, you've always been a good friend. Just do that. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I can do that. And so yeah. <laughs> again, when I kind of like owned my strengths, I feel like I was able to, to blossom and, and really take, take ownership and, and keep moving forward. You know, that's a, I mean, a huge couple points you made there. And for anyone listening to this, one thing could be like the mom comment. Well, that keep, came to you because she said that. But maybe in order for someone to find where some of their strengths are, maybe you need to ask your core group of friends, family, uh, associates that are around you, you know, hey, what do you see as my, you know, you know, superpower or whatever, you know, and let's, let's not say point out all my faults, but you know, what, what is something that, that you see in me that maybe I don't even see in me that is something that um, is a, a positive or, or, you know, something that I can focus on and to do more of in a good way. And sometimes like you just mentioned, someone's going to bring something up and you go, Oh, well, yeah, I can do that more. And I think that's a really interesting thing because we are, are we're too close to ourselves. So sometimes we can't mm -hmm. see it. Right. So that external perspective really helps. Well, and sometimes we don't even see our gifts as being gifts because they come so naturally. Yeah. You know, I, I don't I didn't think of myself as being a good friend and I didn't think of myself. I didn't think that that would be important in business. But when I realized that we're like business is all about relationships and and making people feel comfortable and they all typically buy from somebody they like, know, and trust. And if I could be somebody they like, know, and trust, it would help our business. And so I didn't think of it as a strength until it was pointed out to me. And then I was like, Oh, I can, I can do that. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. You, you mentioned fear and um, I pulled up a document that I found um, this study, this uh, person named Katie Madrano. She's from a company called List Verse. She published an article on the top 10 strong human fears um, that are shared by everybody. And so I, I want to read it through a couple of these and then make a point because I think that your um, just be a friend, uh, uh, you know, realization really ties into helping someone get through their fears because she was saying, you know, the number 10 fear is losing your freedom, the fear and then the fear of the unknown, then pain, disappointment, misery. And then it gets down to the top uh, five loneliness, ridicule, rejection. Of course, death, that's got to be up there. And then the number one fear is failure. So um, we, all, we all can nod and go, yeah, yeah, those are common fears. Sure, we all feel that from some time to time. But how can your um, uh, you know, encouragement to be someone's friend help that? So if someone is, is lonely or facing ridicule or worried about rejection or fear of failure, wow, you can be that encouragement and, like you said, that transformation and be that catalyst. And that is firing on all these cylinders. And maybe these people don't even realize, well, I've got four of the fears and she was a friend and that helped me. But it just it just comes together so naturally. So maybe you, you've got a really great way of looking at the bright side of things. Well, that can tie into helping people overcome these kind of fears in their personal or professional life. So I think that's such a, a neat correlation there. Yeah, I, I, I do too. I, I think – we can choose, right? We can, because those are all so common fears. Um, and I've certainly experienced them myself. But what I've learned throughout my years of continuing to take steps forward is that they don't mean anything. Yep. <laughs> you know, I think sometimes we, we experience fear and we think, I guess that must mean I'm, I shouldn't be doing this. Um, but what I've learned is that the fear is just that. It's just a piece of the puzzle and to keep moving forward. And so, in my opinion, the opposite of fear is, is kind of, I mean, fear is kind of hopeless and, and feeling depressed or anxious, all of those negative words, right? And the opposite to me is actually vision. 
and, and, yeah. and love and hope. And so I feel like part of my job is to keep my own personal vision alive so that I can cast vision to others. And a vision is a pers- like a picture of your future that produces passion. So you see it so clearly that it evokes emotion in you and you're excited to get up in the morning to start pursuing it. So when somebody's living in this fear-based thinking, I, I feel like part of my job is to cast that vision for them. So create a picture of their future that produces passion for them so they can start taking steps as well. You know, it's interesting you said that uh, vision because, it, you know, it's like, is it literally the opposite of fear? Maybe not. But if you have that, that point of view, then it becomes yeah. the opposite of fear because a lot of people go, well, the opposite of fear is faith. Just have faith and step out and it'll all work out. And I think that sometimes you can think you have that faith to bust through that business uh, uh, tr- challenge. But I have found and, and people I work with and in my own life that when you sit down and go, okay, here's the plan, right? Here's this outline. Here's this mind map. Here's okay. this you know, blueprint, whatever that it is for this business project or this new venture in business. And if I can you know, end up here, then to get there, I need to have this uh, as the step before that. And then to get there, I need to have this step. And when you start mapping that out, now all of a sudden you've got this vision, this uh, mission, goal, cause, and you go you know what, to get there, these are just little baby steps. I can do this next baby step. I can do that. And then that helps us to envision our, how our faith, faith will bust through that. And I think that that really, really helps out a whole lot because otherwise you're just saying these mindless words will just persevere and you'll, you'll make it. And people yeah. are like, yeah, but man, I'm confused. I don't know how to get there. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Cause I think you, in order to have faith you you have you ha- kind of have a picture of your future and you know that life can be better and you 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 know what you want but so many people don't even know what they want and so creating that personal clarity and and a picture of the future that produces passion i think is a great first step for anybody that's stuck in fear and then the other thing is they have even if they decide what they want right or we decide what we want and we have a clear picture there can be a lot of doubt that it couldn't even happen, you know, like, is that even reasonable? And so what I've done with this next step is to find people who align with, with some of my beliefs or have vision themselves and are taking steps forward. Community is a big piece of that. And I think that touches on your fear of loneliness. Yeah. I found, you know, we used to think that stress was the biggest, biggest catalyst of medical issues. And we're now learning that it's actually loneliness. So finding a community to support those those goals is important too. Yeah, I mean, I I think that's super huge to to be looking at things from a unique pers- a different perspective because I think we're always told you know do it this way and then when you sit back and think about it and go well you know so I'm sure that there have been times in your past where you where you thought it's just not worth it let's just give it up and go you know, like you said go back and get another degree or go back to you know get a traditional you know whatever so what it what were some of your approaches to get through those tough times when you thought it's just not worth it i'm ready to just go back and you know go but go to my comfort zone you know give up mm-hmm. and and get the old nine to five Yes. Oh, my goodness. So there's a couple of things that come to mind. Um, when we were getting ready to quit our J-O-Bs, I was a clinical psychologist and my husband was an aerospace engineer. Even though we were making good money with our quote unquote side hustle, it was still scary. Yeah. And so we ha- had to ask ourselves the question, what's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that can happen? And the worst that could happen was that we go get another job, yeah. you know, And and could we do that if we needed to? Absolutely. We were marketable. We, you know, had skills. We certainly could get another job if we needed to. In fact, both of our jobs said, if you want to come back, let us know. (laughs) And 11 years later, now we're like, that is the worst that could happen. But but it helped us to take those steps and not see it as such a big change or such a big risk. Uh, and then even now, oh my goodness, we, I created uh, a year ago, I started a workbook, um, creating a workbook and, um, creating some new project, like some new content, I guess, to add value to our team and beyond with all of the things that I've learned over the past 15 years of coaching and training and mentoring and all of that. And I've 
almost given up several times. Oh yeah. my goodness. Uh, just because it's new. And, and I think the thing, the one liner that keeps coming into my mind is I don't know how to do this. Yeah. And, and so it's very easy to, I'm like, there's the, the opposite, the, the option is to just go be a mom. <laughs> like yep. I'll just be a mom and not even worry about this. But I do feel like I have something to say and I've got a call in my life and I have, like, I want to bless people and I want to call out the best in them. And so I don't think that I would be satisfied um, if I didn't keep pressing forward. So I just have to keep learning and having the vision for myself that as I'm learning how to write autoresponders and do sales pages and all of these things that are totally not my skill set, yep. <laughs> um, that it's a, you know, it's all going to come together. It's a journey, right? But you've got to have that thing in front of your your uh, uh, mindset that draws you and pulls you. And it mm -hmm. shouldn't be the thing that's like, oh, I've got to do this today. It's like, ooh, in order to get me closer to my end goal, vision, helping other people have the same thing I'm doing, I need to do this today. Okay, good. I get to do this. I'm going to learn this. And then you, it's just, like you said, it's all yeah. uh, you know, how you respond or react or your approach to something because, man, we have that choice to respond in a good way or react in a negative way. And, and I think that it really does paint our, you know, uh, approach to the day. So I love that mindset. So uh, give us a little bit of a, um, a idea of, you mentioned the workbook coming up. How could people connect with you? How can people, you know, get involved with, you know, listen to your podcast, buy your book and, and, and uh, engage with, with your brand. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. So I started a, a podcast as well, and it's entitled Dreamcast. And you can find that on any podcast player. And that is just a really fun place to share inspirational stories of people that have gone through their own transformation. But then I also do some solo episodes and things like that, too. So it's been pretty fun. And then if you go to denisewalsh.com, right now I do have the ability for you to put your email in and we'll send you a 50% off coupon for the workbook when it comes out. And the workbook is really unique in my opinion because it combines science, scripture, and stories to help you go from where you are to where you want to be. Uh, and I share a lot of my personal transformations in there, and then I connect it with um, with the neuroscience and quantum physics and what we're learning. You know, basically, science is connecting is, is it confirming what the Bible has already taught, and so it's been really, really cool to connect to those two. And I dive deep into the workbook. So it's done now. Woohoo! And um, right. now we're just getting it printed. And so in the next six weeks or so, it should be live. Awesome. Well, I will be one of the first purchasers because that sounds awesome to me. And uh, I really appreciate uh, your time today on, on the show, getting to know you. So thanks so much for, for coming on. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.